what unifies fundamental and incremental research is that someone's interested in it. And it's that interest that drives all progress. It's, it's true that fundamental research eventually, typically, eventually drives something useful as well, but not always. And, you know, you could ask, well, if the general theory of relativity hadn't been invented for another 60 years, let's say, after Einstein, nothing practical would have been affected. Then, then it was needed for the GPS system. Then, <laughs> you know, now it's being needed for other things. But, but perhaps if, if you were um, interested in, in purely utilitarian um, outputs, you would have delayed Einstein. But um, then, if you t if you take that kind of utilitarian attitude to Einstein, you would have taken the utilitarian attitude to everything, and you would never have had antibiotics and and um, uh, rocketry and satellites and th th that sort of thing. The, 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 and the reason that it's all connected is not so much that it that the progress in the whole of science and engineering comes from fundamental research as a sort of wellspring that that also happens but but it, it the main thing is that the whole of progress in human ideas is a single thing an indivisible thing which is all powered by interest by curiosity by dissatisfaction with the way things are currently thought of okay so it's not an argument to pursue foundational research because in your mind maybe a decade from now maybe 200 years from now it will prove to be useful no it's not that i thought what you're going to say it's an in and of itself argument but it doesn't sound like that it sounds like pursue it because this is part of a larger knowledge creation process exactly exactly it's needed for that and if you if you um suppress the impulse to create the impulse to to improve anywhere you're going to affect everywhere or you you may affect everywhere i mean you could be lucky and not affect um, the theory of evolution or whatever, but in 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 practice, you uh, you usually do. Um, Interesting. It, okay, sorry to interrupt you. So it sounds like you're saying that. Look, a child has a natural curiosity. Yes. As you get older, your curiosity morphs into various subjects. One of those subjects could be foundational research in yes. physics, but yes. that is an example of foundational research curiosity, and yes. that is important. Yes. And therefore, if you're talking about your hypothetical rich person, a hypothetical rich person who has that interest or who wishes they could have pursued that interest uh, when they didn't have time to do it when they were younger or that kind of thing, somebody who, for reasons of their own, thinks that that is important and they're curious as to where that will go and they, 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 want, it to, they want to get the answer before they die, uh -huh. That is the thing that this hypothetical rich person should be funding. Yes, and I imagine this hypothetical rich person <laughs> <laughs> was not able to pursue foundational research because you hypothetically don't get rich by pursuing fundamental research. Uh, that's the whole point of our conversation for the past 30 minutes. Yes, yes. Um, presumably something else interested them. And that involved making money. I, I don't think, by the way, I don't think there's there's or hardly anybody who's who's interested in making money per se. They make money because that is what they need to do the thing that they're interested in. 